everyone, it's Nicole again, and today I have a really quick and easy Easter themed treat bag to share with you today. So to get started, I'm going to be using the grassy border dye along with the popular goodie bag dye. It's like one of my favorites right now. Love using that for the holidays. I'm also going to be using the set Extra Special Easter along with its coordinating dyes. And I'm going to be using the walnut ink and the mermaid ink as well. So to get started, I'm going to take the goodie bag die and a standard sheet of cream cardstock, which is 8.5 by 11 sheet, and I'm going to cut it down to a 6 and 3 fourths of an inch so that it'll fit through my cuddle bug. And with that size, I'm able to use this goodie bag die and get two out of this one cut of paper. And it takes two of these to assemble um, and make one bag. So there's the first one. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put this back onto my cutting plate and I'm going to cut out the second one. Just going to run that through one more time. Okay, and there they are. So now I want to go ahead and create um, a grassy background, but instead of using paper or any stamping, I'm just going to go ahead and use a post-it note here. And what I did was run that through my cuddle bug off camera, and I put the die on the sticky side of the post-it note, and then I'm just going to go ahead and adhere it and use shabby shutters and bundled sage to create um, this grassy look in the background. And I'm just putting some tape there because I do only want um, the grass to be on the front of the box. But, um, I mean, if, if you're creating these at home for to give them away or to have them on a candy table or as a place setting um, and you wanted to have the grass go all the way around, you could just repeat this on the back and then repeat this on the gusset um, tabs also if you want the grass to go all the way around. But I think I'm perfectly fine with just having it on the front. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm just blending these two inks together just to get a really nice green. I'm kind of also going for a vintage -y look, so that's, kind of, that's why I kind of went with these darker tones. Now I'm just blending those in together. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and remove the adhesive and the post-it note tape, and I think that looks really cute. That's exactly what I was looking for. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take the little bunny images here, because I want it to look like two little chocolate bunnies are sitting in the grass or something like that. And I think that these images are so cute. And because I want them to look like chocolate bunnies, I'm, st I'm, I'm stamping them in this Lawn Fawn Walnut ink. And then I'm also going to be taking a dark brown Copic marker, and I'm just going to color that in, in one dark shade. So I'm using E23, which is the hazelnut color. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the entire image except for the bow. Now I'm going to do the same with the other bunny that has the bitten ear. I think what would also be cute for this, um, and it's actually something I did for another project, is when I was done coloring these in, I wanted it to look a little bit more shiny and like a realistic chocolate bunny, so I used some glossy accents. And I just put that all over the areas where there was chocolate, and then I let it set overnight. Um, you don't have to leave, leave it overnight, but I just decided to do that. Um, and it looks really cute, so if you wanted to do that, that's definitely an option, and it looks really great. So now I'm just using these blue Copic markers to color in these bows. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take the coordinating dies 
and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut these out because I, um, while the box is like a one layer, um, I do want there to be some dimension, so I am going to go ahead and cut these out and then pop them up on some 3D adhesive foam. And off camera, I went ahead and cut those out. So now what I want to do is make it look a little bit more vintage or shabby chic, so I'm adding some more Distress Ink in the color Brushed Corduroy. But you could also use something like Vintage Photo that works great also. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those to the creases here. Or to these edges, I mean. And this uh, step is completely optional, but the theme I was going for was the Vintage Shabby Chic theme, so I thought I would just do that. <laughs> Now I'm just going to go ahead and figure out the arrangement. And I think that's going to work. And now I could go ahead and choose a sentiment. I think that fits perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up with my acrylic block and stamp that in some mermaid ink. Just like that. I think that color looks so great with all the other colors that are on this bag. And now if you wanted to, um, you could add the little basket in the background or any of these other little elements if you wanted it to be a little bit more um, intricate. But I did want to go for something really quick and easy that you could recreate for this um, holiday. So I just, I'm going to go with just clean and simple for this. And now I'm just assembling the bag. This is one of my favorite things to do is actually seeing the bag come to life. And I love making a ton of these. And if you, you know me personally, um, you know that I give these out a lot. <laughs> Okay, and now I'm just using my bone folder on the inside to really secure um, those tabs that I put the adhesive on. And then I'm going to go ahead and come back in with that dark brown um, Distress Ink. And I'm just going to add the Distress Ink in the places that I couldn't get to when it was not assembled. Just blending that here on the corners. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add some dimension to these using these uh, 3D adhesive foam. And I'm going to go ahead and put that all over um, the back of this bunny with the bitten ear and then adhere that. But the second bunny, I'm actually only going to put 3D adhesive foam on one side of it and then glue on the other side, which I'll show you how I do it right now, but it's just because I want them all to be the same height. So just on that right side, and then I'm going to add Tombow Mono Multi Glue on this side here. And then just adhere it right there. I think that looks so cute. Okay, so now that that's ready, I could go ahead and fill it with treats. And I usually, nowadays, since I'm so busy, I just will buy treats. And then I'll um, put as many as I can into these little cellophane bags. And then put it in the treat bag. But um, if you don't have these little CeeLo bags that are resealable, you could also use anything like, you know, like wax paper or... A Ziploc bag or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this. Usually I pack in as much candy as I can, but for this video I'm just going to just do a little bit like that. And I think that looks great. So I'm also going to go ahead and take a piece of mint tissue paper that I already cut down to a really small square. And I'm taking these serrated edge scissors and I'm just going to cut around 
the edges here because I just want to give it a little bit of added interest. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fold this up so I can fit it into the box. And I think that looks perfect. I love that color. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this tutorial. And thank you so much for watching. Bye! Oh, 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 oh